Let's demonstrate a current issue we have running QuotaCheck from TTY7. To work around this, utilize TTY1 when running QuotaCheck. To do that, do Control and Alt and then F1 to go to TTY1. When you're done, do Control Alt F7 to go to TTY7. Now that I'm logged back in, um, I prepared my file system for quotas, but whenever I use QuotaCheck, at least on this flavor and version of Ubuntu 1010, I've noticed that again I need to go to TTY1. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. If I run I try to run quota check from TTY7. Here's what I'm getting. Um, it'll toil and toil and toil. And based on, even though I'm using you know root privileges, I don't have permission from this terminal. So again, if you're going to do quota check. And you really only have to do that occasionally for maintenance. At this point, I would go to TTY1. Now, that's not the case with other versions of Fedora and other versions of Ubuntu, but you know, each each new flavor, each development sometimes comes out with bugs. and um, They add some new things, and sometimes they break some old things, or they modify some, you know, there's some configuration files and things that are still sort of under development. And so if you see this, I, just, I did this to produce this error so you could see it, but if you see this, just realize that um, you know a workaround is go to TTY1 and log in there and run quota check from that terminal and then come back to TTY7 to do other things that you need to do. Now from TTY7, once I've done that, prepared my file system, I can turn quotas on and off quite easily. And um, you know, in order to do that, again, I would need root privileges sudo and the commands quota on. Um, and you know, the switches are you know usually AVUG. And I can turn quotas off with the same switches. Quota off. Let me turn them back on. Configure quotas on a user account. To do this, use sudo edquota u and then the user. All right. So let's go and you know actually create a configuration file, and um, let's apply this to some users. So real quick, I'm going to make some users, and let me see what we have. All right, it's just me right now in the home folder. So I'm going to do sudo user add um, dash d to create a home directory, and we'll make a user called user one, and he'll be named user one. And we'll make another user called user two, home directory user two and user two. And let's set the password. Um, sudo password user one and pass. Now watch, five minutes from now when we log in this time, I, I won't remember it, but PSS and 2 will do the same thing. You can't brute force my password, all lowercase PASS. Um, but anyway, alright, so we have our users now, and if I look, they also have directories, and look at, you know, who the owner, the group ownership and, you know, the owner, user owner are respective of those users, just like my directory belongs to me, their directories belong to them. Um, respectively, so um, we're ready to start implementing some quotas. To briefly review our options. Now before we edit the quota files, um, let's go over the switches real quick for the commands that we've used so far. So remember this command sudo and we did quota check um, and the commands we used were MAVUG. So let's go over these, these switches and these options one at a time. If I were to pull up the man page, um, the lowercase m option specifies that I should not try to remount the file system. But, um, you know, in this case, it's it's read only. If it's lowercase m, if it were uppercase m, it would force checking and remounting of the file system as read write. But that wouldn't be a good idea unless we could be 100% positive that no process would be writing to the file system. Otherwise, it could corrupt the file system. We'd have to reboot and run FSCK and and bad things there. So, no capital M but lowercase m. That option. The next one, a. The lowercase a means check all of the mounted non-NFS, in other words, the non-network file systems in etc m tab. And remember the m tab. If, if I type the mount command, those are the commands that are actually, you know, what's listed in m tab is pretty much what I'm getting when I type the mount command. Um, v is for verbose, and you know we're all familiar with that, but that just causes it to report on its progress as it runs and not to run in the background on silent mode, which is sort of the default setting. So you want that because if you get any errors or problems, you want to see what they are in verbose mode. Um, U in this case specifies um, 
you know only uh, you know basically only check for user quotas listed in the etc and tab file and then G is basically the same thing for group only check for group quotas in the etc and tab file okay and again if I were to cat that let me do cat etc and m tab you can see all of these you know, mounted directories in my mounted file system, well, if I type in the mount command, I pretty much get the same thing. So it's just reading the forward slash etc forward slash m tab file. So quote to check, those first five options are switches MAVUG, that's what they stand for. And now what about quota on and quota off? Um, all right, so the first one we did was quota on, and we just did AVUG. So again, let's take a, a look at the switches there. The first one, um, A, is for all. So enable all the file systems in the etc FS tab file that you know are set up for quotas or that have the quota option, like the one that we just added to the FS tab file. V is for verbose mode again to display any messages or errors and things not to run in the background. Um, U is for users, in other words, you know manipulate, modify, change user quotas, and G is for groups, manipulate, modify, change group quotas, and actually. Quota off is the same thing. The A, it would be you know all file systems in the etcfs tab file. V would be verbose, display any messages, don't run in the background. And then U would be user and G would be group for either turn on or turn off um, quotas for you know either users or groups. So we've gone over those options there. Let's go back to step nine. Configure quotas on a user account. Again, use sudo add quota dash u and the username. Let's uh, zoom in here and let's edit some quota files. All right. So to do that, I need to use the command ed quota. And of course, I need root privileges. So sudo ed quota. And remember, one of the users we created was user one. So we're going to edit the quota for that user. And when you open the configuration file, you'll see soft and hard. Um, now the soft is the amount of space that they can use until they start to get a warning. Uh, you know. So in other words, if I set this for five megabytes, five thousand bytes then once that user had consumed five megabytes of space then they would start getting warned that's the soft limit now the hard limit would be the actual you know actual maximum number of, of amount of disk space they'd be allowed to use before they were forbidden to use any more so i'm gonna make that 10 megabytes so five megabytes and 10 megabytes um and you know there's also something called a grace period which we could set with the command ed quota dash t the grace period is the number of days they would have. Um, in other words, if if I had exceeded my soft limit, um, but not my hard limit, that would be the number of days I would have to sort of get my, you know, get my house in order. Um, but let's let's take a look at these two without really setting the grace period yet. So we'll set a soft limit of five megabytes, a hard limit of ten megabytes. And yes, I know, you know, obviously you wouldn't set limits that small for you know in a real situation. It would be at least a couple of hundred megabytes, if not gigabytes. Um, and typical usage of this would be like a file server in a large company, or what if you're an internet service provider and you're, or you know, maybe you're hosting websites and you sell different packages. You know, for five bucks a month you get 20 megabytes of space, and for 10 bucks a month you get 100, and for 15 bucks a month you get 200 megabytes, and 20 bucks a month you get a gigabyte. So. If that were the case, quotas is a, you know, would be an effective and efficient way to implement that policy where you like an internet service provider. So anyway, we set our soft and our hard limits, and we're going to save our configuration file. And now I just want to log out and log in as user 1, and we'll go download a file and test those limits. All right, so I'm going to get out of here, and let me go ahead and log out. And I'm going to log in as user 1 with an incredibly hard to guess password of all lowercase pass. Super complex. Now that I'm logged in, um, I go over here and, and look at disk space. Let's take a look at our disk space here. And I'll print my working directory, so home user one. Of course I'm user one. And let's see if there's anything here. Alright, so nothing here, um, so to speak. And nothing here. And downloads. Um, disk space usage here. You know, I have plenty of free space. But let's test our quota limitations. I'm going to open a web browser. I'm going to try to download a file. 
and let me see, let me uncheck that option, what's going on the web, and let's go to Adobe's website, they always have nice big files, and here, and let's grab the Adobe Reader, I'm going to go ahead and download the Adobe Reader, and then download should start automatically, I can't get this file here, All right, there we go. All right, so there's a Ben file, and this is you know, this file is fairly large. Um, it's like 40 megabytes. So, and notice it's it's warning me here. There's not enough room on the disk to save the part. Remember this file is like yeah, blah blah blah. Okay, so I can you know I verified that my quota limitation is in place for user one. And at that point, I either have to increase his quota limitation, or I have to tell him I'm sorry, but you can't have that much uh, file space for your files. All right, and I'm still logged in um, as user one. It's my working directory. I'm in his home folder, and here's a couple of files. Um, I don't have pseudo privileges here. I keep forgetting. Um, now, instead of logging out and logging in as me, let's let's practice what remember we were talking about sudo and the sudo list the other day. That was a few tutorials back. So I'm going to do su substitute user. And even though I'm logged in as user one, I'm going to temporarily access things as myself. So I'm logged in as me now, but if I print the working directory, notice I'm still in user one's home folder. And this way I can gain pseudo privileges. And the reason is I need you know pseudo privileges or root privileges temporarily to run the ed quota command. And I'm gonna do it for user one. I'm gonna modify some limitations on user one here. Okay, and this time he has uh, 10 megabytes or 10,000 bytes for the soft limit and 100,000 bytes or 100 megabytes for the hard limit. And I'm going to do roughly about 50 here. 55, um, which would be, um, you know, actually his, his basic limits. Um, for And for soft limits, I'm going to do 50. All right, so that should allow us maybe one download of Adobe, but then the next one it should block. And I can just try to demonstrate here, and then my you know, remember the grace period. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Um, yes, to modify it. Let's make sure. Yeah, 50 megabytes and 55 megabytes. Alrighty. And let's modify the default grace period. To do this, we'll use sudo add quota and the dash t option. Now let's go ahead and look at the grace period with the dash T option, right? So it's seven days and seven days. Seven days. Remember that movie was it the ring or whatever? It was real creepy. Seven days. Anyway, no, hopefully it's not creepy. But um <laughs> so anyway, um let's go ahead and, and try to I'm gonna exit log back in as user one. So I'm no longer C Germany, now I'm user one again. And let's open up Firefox and try to download Adobe and see if we can bust that quota. We should get one successful download, about 42 megabytes, but after that it should should deny us permission to download it a second time. And let me go ahead and make sure, all right, good. So let's go to Adobe's website. And go here, and go here, and download this, and save file. Zoom, there she goes. And she's loading. Okay, that was our first download. And if I go over here, we'll do a long listing. But you can see that, you know, it's about 45 megabytes there. It's about busted our limit. So um, let's try that again. And we'll save it. And this time, Shouldn't let us. We've 45. There we go. We just busted our limit. All right. So there, our, our quota kicked in and said, "Hey, you know, we can't." So just you know, some of the preliminaries with quotas. And uh, again, if you're kind of studying for those CompTIA Linux Plus exams, you'll want to familiarize yourself with quotas and things in both maybe Fedora, Red Hat, and, and Debian systems. So this has been Ubuntu, and I'll I'll try to put one up a little bit later in Fedora, maybe 14 or Red Hat server as well.
You can check your users and quota data with the rep quota command. To do this, use sudo rep quota dash u and for the root file system, root. And let's use one more tool before we go. And this will be the uh, rep quota command, again, from uh, the quota tool package. Then it'll you know, display a report of quotas and things. Um, actually, let me use root privileges for sudo. And I'm going to specify u for the user option. And I'm going to specify the uh, root mount point. Okay. And if I look here, the root mount point here, I've got user 2. In this case, you know, there's no real quota set for them. Um, in this case, uh, here, they have six days left um, on their, their, their grace period there. And then there's their, their 5, and then there's their 10. Um, and if I go, you know, look at, you know, in this case, there's no quota set for me, no quota set for user 2, but there's a quota set for user 1. But just, an, you know, a nice reporting tool that will kind of let you look at disk limits and the way users are kind of, you know, utilizing their disk space or how much disk space they're using when you're implementing quotas um, in a Debian or a Red Hat uh, file system.